Welcome back, I'm Tedward. Tonight we're gonna to take a little night drive in the old school Maybach. This is a 2004 Maybach 57 and I've been daily driving it because my M3 is in the shop. And I know Wild Motorsport is fantastic, but no, they did not give me a Maybach loaner. A good friend of mine, Chris, uh, said, hey, if you're without a car for a little while, why don't you go up and run the Maybach around for a bit? And uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. I've been driving it for the last few days. It's been fantastic. We've got a twin turbo V12. It's 6,000 pounds, 5.7 meters long, and it is an absolute hoot. It may have failed to take down Rolls Royce, but it's certainly winning me over little by little. So I've got a big video coming with this car with all of the details, but really what you need to know is we've got about 540 horsepower, 660 pound-feet of torque. It's the first snow of the season. And uh, yeah, let's just enjoy the silky smooth V12 and this stunning interior. I've got the key fob in my pocket, which means I can start it without putting it in here. I can just hit this start stop ignition button here. And there we have it. Pop on our heated seat. I actually have seat massagers too, but I don't think we need that. Put our headlights on. Swipe the wipers, off we go. I just love the way this V12 gets up and goes. It's so silky smooth and you really don't need much for revs. You can do this entire drive under 3000 RPM and it never feels anemic. It always feels powerful. It's the complete opposite of the high revving, naturally aspirated V8 that I've got in my M3. little bit of driveline vibration that you'll feel in the car. You might hear it through the binaural audio, but you'll definitely notice it when we get out to the highway. Incredible headlights. It's nice because these headlights are actually marked with the Maybach emblem on them. And uh, they are deserving. 2004, these are incredible headlights. For 2021, these are incredible headlights. These brakes are brake by wire, so they're not directly connected to the pedal. The pedal is actually talking to two computers because there are six calipers on these on this car. You've got two sets up front, so each front wheel has two calipers. In case one computer system fails, the other should catch it so we don't uh, careen into anything we don't want to careen into. Careening's usually not good. What I've found is that in comparison to its Rolls-Royce competitor, this is a bit more sporty. I feel a lot more connected to the car, which isn't necessarily a good thing from a passenger perspective, because if you're a passenger, you wanna feel like you're floating on a cloud. Whereas this, it does feel a lot like an S-Class. If you've driven an S65, this is going to feel abundantly similar to that car. It really doesn't have that much character all its own, aside from the fact that it's got this extremely long wheelbase. Now these twin turbos boost to 18.9 PSI in later years of the Maybach 57 when we get the Maybach 57S. 
they put a six liter instead of this five and a half liter V12. So it got a little more juice, a bit more go, and I think it had over 700 pound feet of torque at that point. I don't know that this required that, and it's outrageous because this already has a better power to weight ratio than an S2000. This is not a slow car, but it is a thirsty car. So right now we're getting nine miles per gallon. Once we get out to the highway, we'll be able to eke out around 16 to 17 on the way home on the highway. It's a very complicated car. There's a lot that can fail. And when it was new, it was about $350,000. They started at 311, I wanna say, somewhere in that neighborhood. This one's got quite a few options. Heated, cooled seats. The rear seats have literally everything, including a champagne refrigerator, classic my box stuff. But, you know, today you can find a really nice example around fifty dollars to $80,000. This was on the lower end of that spectrum. And, you know, that comes with its own issues because if anything goes wrong in your my box, you're going to pay for it. The steering is good, but it's not all that communicative. So you've got to be pretty aware, especially in slick conditions. You're not going to want to put yourself in any situations where you're going to fall into understeer. Understeer is not going to be good in a Maybach. We'll turn this on so we've got the good thumbnail photo. You know, this thing weighs 6,000 pounds. If you start to lose the front end, you're not going to have a lot of hope of getting it back. incredible because we've got all this torque and power but we don't have egregious feelings through the car you just get this nice wave of torque and everything feels great you just go what's entertaining in this too is when you pass another like beautiful Mercedes we are the top dog that's an s-class we do have a distronic so we'll be able to set our speed past our right lane traffic and it'll hold that now like i said this car would be very expensive to get perfect if anything goes wrong and this one does have some interesting electrical gremlins this distronic system tends to just deactivate itself somewhat randomly we'll see how long it lasts right now the rear seats don't seem to want to recline or move even though they have five memory settings on each side for the rear seats, which is fantastic. I've got that up here as well, but kind of funny to see that many memory settings on the rears. Got my foot in it, we've got the Distronic Override. What's interesting is this car is not it's not perfect and that's kind of the deal when you buy older cars you've got to always make decisions on how perfect do I want to make something because if you wanted to make this thing feel brand new you're gonna be troubleshooting a lot of things but if you can if you can withstand a little bit a little bit of imperfections I think you'd be just fine you know if you had reasonable cash to go and buy one of these for fun. I mean, this is a fun thing to own. And this brings up a big point. You know, every time I drive like a 911 Turbo and I do a launch control or something fast, the first comments I'm gonna get are, well, a Tesla's faster. You get a Model S Plaid for $134,000 and it's cheaper. Why on earth would you buy this other thing? And that's really upsetting to see. And it's not because I'm a Tesla hater or anything. It's just that, I'm an enthusiast and I like variety and I like character 
And I like the character of a Tesla. The Tesla has a character all on its own and it's fantastic. But what I don't understand is when folks just see some numbers and think, well, this one has better numbers than that one. So what's the point of anything else? If that's true, there's absolutely no place in the world for this Maybach. And I just can't concede on that. I feel like there's absolutely a place in the world for this Maybach. It's fantastic. It's not perfect. And its imperfections make it really interesting. In fact, it's kind of failed marketing history makes it interesting to me that Mercedes-Benz went after Rolls-Royce to try to take down a Phantom with this and just didn't work and eventually had to kind of make it a trim level, I guess, of the S-Class. It's just not what it was intended to be. I think the Maybach was supposed to be a brand all its own. And had it succeeded, we would have been in a very different world. But it just wasn't different enough from the S-Class, I think, to differentiate its price. Plus, anyone who's driven a Phantom or high-end Rolls-Royce, they know there's a certain ride characteristic associated with those cars that that's where the money is. <laughs> that's what makes it worth the money. Um, and while this certainly is completely different from most things on the market, it just isn't set apart enough. We're at 32 degrees outside. That's when we got to start worrying about freezing roads, although the roads are probably holding on to a little more heat than the Air. So we're going to be in the clear, but we're also on a Michelin all season that is winter rated. It's certainly not a winter or snow tire, but it'll get the job done. I'm not concerned about this. What's great about this car is I just never find myself in a rush. They're so well insulated. The, the window panes are incredibly thick. There's two panes per window and I've never seen this much thickness on glass before. I mean, it is really something special. And when you get into anything else, I was driving a Cayenne the other day and it was just sounded like a cheap Toyota inside compared to this. And it's really hard. I got to get out of this thing because it's really miscalibrating my brain on what NVH is supposed to be like. fit in quite a bit of steering lock in the corners with this car. Once you get used to that, you can place which uh, where, where the wheels are, you're good to go. It can be a bit intimidating though. This is a very wide car. Because it's so smooth, you end up going a little faster than you anticipate if you lean on the throttle for long enough. About the limit of the front tires there. Nice solid boost from these turbos. They're going slow, which tells me that's probably maybe a state trooper that just passed them. I'm gonna be a little cautious as we approach. But isn't that amazing how you can do all this? at such low RPM. I mean, you just never need to stress this engine out. I'm trying to be a good doobie with reasonable lane etiquette. I'm gonna use the right lane because, well, I'm not passing anybody and there's no reason not to. Some folks disagree and they believe that this is just a quote, slow lane and the middle lane is a cruising lane. Uh, I'm not one of those believers. Although if you are out here in the middle of the night, I like the middle lane just in case a deer comes from either side. It's kind of like playing tennis. You want to play mid-court in 
case the ball goes one way or the other, give yourself more of a chance. But look at that, we're at 13 and a half miles per gallon since we started the car. When you're driving this car, part of you wishes someone else was driving the car just so you could ride in the back. It's nice back there. <laughs> and there's massage chairs in the rear as well. Ultra smooth shifts from this five speed automatic. Just coast. We're up to 15 miles per gallon. Feeling pretty good about that. That's an accomplishment. What engines are you coasting along at like 1100 RPM in? Gave me a downshift so it could be at 1400. <laughs> it's just so torquey. And I like that it's all going to the rear. It's rear wheel drive. You know, we don't have some fancy all wheel drive system. Just a big long drive shaft all the way to the back. wild to watch that speedo rise. This thing really takes off. You use a lot of fuel when you're doing it though. So guys, thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Let me know if you want to see more night drives like this where they're just kind of tame and chill. I think this is a great place to stop. Tis the season, am I right? Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. Man, I would just be the most baller Uber driver right now. If I went into Boston, signed up for Uber, I don't think I'd make any money because whatever would normally be profits would just be completely squandered on fuel. But wouldn't you be thrilled if you called an Uber and a Maybach showed up? I'd be pretty happy.